Truly wonderful, glorious word of God. I'm in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you, as he quickened, were dead in trespasses and sins. <laughs> Praise be to God. Praise be to God. You know what it means? Now, the word dead comes from death. To die, that's past tense, as the past tense, you know. We were dead. What does it mean, dead? Because before salvation, we were alive in the body. But in the eyes of God, in the mind of God, we were dead, which means cut off, separated, because that's what death means. Contrary to what we think normally, death doesn't mean the end. No, no. It means separation. Thanatos, separation. So because of our condition in Adam, because Adam is disobedient, Adam is a rebellious mankind, we're born in him, we were dead, separated from God, in trespasses and sins. Now I know there are millions of people that say, no, I'm not a sinner. Okay. So you're telling me that you know better than God. Once again, proves that you're a sinner. <laughs> because Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But praise God, that verse continues, being justified freely through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Don't, wanna, don't add anything. Your flesh wants to yeah, but I need to pray. Yeah, but I need to go to church. Yeah, I need to be baptized in water. Yeah, I need this. I need, I, 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 I got a problem. <laughs> no, the Holy Ghost, Christ from heaven. But the power of the Holy Ghost inspiring his apostle, Paul, our apostle, preacher, teacher, in faith and verity to write, and you as he quickened. Who were dead in trespasses and sins, were in in time past. When is that? Before salvation. Before that glorious change of situation. Ye what? So you see, we were dead in trespasses and sins, spiritually speaking, but we were alive and we were walking according to the course of this world. What do we discover here now? This world we are born in and we live in is got a course. And believe it or not, this course has not been set by God, our God, our Heavenly Father. But listen, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Who is this guy? He's telling you. Do you know when the Bible talks about principality, powers, dominions, and thrones? Principalities means there are princes. Do you remember when Jesus in his earthly ministry said, the Satan, the devil, is the prince of this world? The prince of the power of the air. And guess what? It's a spirit. God is a spirit. The angels are spirits. The devil with a fallen shadow is a spirit. That's why you don't see him. And all this representation of, you know, this guy with the horns and red, you know, red, uh, how do you call it? With a pitchfork, red suit. Nah, that's not. It's a spirit. You can't, you can't resemble physically. That's mythology, Greek mythology. Wherein in time past you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now, would you please underline this, now, he wrote this 2,000 years ago, but it's valid now, because this is the eternal word of God. And if you're not saved, it's working now in the children of disobedience. Who are the children of disobedience? I'll tell you straight away. All mankind. 
Jews and Gentiles. Oh, oh. No, I don't believe it so. Because, well, I know. I know that you have one million and one different opinions. But guess what? Who cares? My opinion, your opinions, they're not important to God. It's what is written that is important. There are children of disobedience now. They are under the prince of the power of the air. Among whom also, we all had our conversation in times past. You see, this times past can be come back again. This would be our condition before salvation. In the last plural of our flesh, so our flesh is lasting. Our flesh is never satisfied. It's like addiction, you know, you get addicted to any substance, anything. Once you have it, you want more. And after that, you want more. That's addiction. And to break the cycle of addiction is a very difficult thing. But in this case, you couldn't even break because you were in this condition. Among whom also we all had a conversation in times past, in the last of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. You know what Jesus said in his earthly ministry to Israel, in the red letters? The flesh profits nothing. This is the word of vanity. Why do you think the Holy Ghost says to Solomon in the Ecclesiastes, vanity of vanity, everything is vanity. Ah. Among whom also we will have a conversation in times past, in the last of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. That was rules. The man in Adam, a corrupt, fallen mind, a corrupt flesh. You know, the Bible talks about the works of the flesh, and they are Adultery, fornication, murder, blah, blah, blah. A very nasty list of terrible things. And we're by nature. We're by nature the children of wrath, even as others. It's not a question we were different, you know. This was our condition. Children of disobedience. Children of wrath. Walking. Conversation. Last of the flesh. Dead in trespasses and sins. We needed the intervention of God. And you as a quicken who were dead in trespasses and sins. We were separated from God. Praise God, here's the intervention of God. Ephesians 2, 4. But God. But God. Who is rich in mercy? What is mercy? Well, mercy is when God doesn't give us what we deserve. We all deserve punishment. We all do. That's about what? Because we're sinners. No breakers. Because in Adam, in the flesh, we all ungodly sinners. All enemies of God. Children of wrath and disobedience. But no, me, I haven't done anything. You really think so, don't you? God is righteous. God is holy. Evil cannot exist in the very presence of God. Evil exists here. We are sinners in the flesh. We all deserve to be rightfully so punished. But God doesn't give us this punishment because of his mercy. 
That's right. So mercy is where God doesn't give you what you deserve. And grace is when he gives you what you don't deserve. What a great God, isn't it? Don't you want to worship him? Don't you want to don't you don't you want double? <laughs> uh, it's early in the morning. But God was rich in the in mercy for his great love. Now we have another element here. Mercy, love. God is love. For his great love wherewith he loved us. Oh, as Gentiles. Yes. People think that God is only the God of Israel. You know? No. He's not only the God of Israel. Of the Gentiles also. In fact, he's the God of everyone and everywhere. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, even when we were dead in sins, even when we were in that terrible condition, dire straits, desperate, end of the line condition, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace, he has saved. This is another nail in the salvation by works coffin. There are no works you can do that I can do, that we can do to please God, that to be, to have the favor of God, as you hear some people, you know. Even when we were dead in sins, Quicken us together with Christ by grace, He has saved. Now, the Holy Ghost is introducing this concept for the Ephesians, but also for me and you. Are you saved? You say by grace. Don't count your prayers, your tears, crocodile type tears. You know, Lord, I promise I will never do this again. Oh, yes. Oh yes, they owe your religion. You sin, you confess your sin, you promise you'll never do it again. <laughs> Lord, sorry. And then you do it again. And when you do it, you really don't care. You just do it because your flesh is do it. Your last, do it. What is it? I don't know. Maybe you shouldn't eat Nutella. You go there and just put the spoon in the Nutella box and you start eating Nutella. Your sugar goes up. <laughs> now, nah, well, you know, not to say all the things, horrible things that we do. Even when we're dead in sins, as quicken us together with Christ, by grace, yes, sir. Brothers, sisters, me, myself, you, they, listen. By grace, you say, if you save, you say by grace. End of story. This is the death, no, I say, the death cry to religion. Judaism, Hinduism, Islam, Christianity, evangelical, evangelical, whatever it is, Catholicism. Syncretism, whatever you want to call it, all this mess out there, the flesh promises nothing. It's good for nothing. But all this religion will give a good push to hell. You need salvation by grace. You need to receive what God has done by the cross of Christ. And has raised us up together. This together with Christ is so important. Together, together with Christ. Thank you, Lord. And made us, made us sit together, work in heavenly places in Christ. Brothers and sisters and friends out there are not capable. This is too deep. I'm continually. In a state of awe and admiration for God, 
Because he's the one who did the impossible. It's not Tom Cruise of Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible is the Lord Jesus Christ. The righteous Jesus Christ who came to save, seal us and do these operations of salvation is the operation of God. And when I say God, God the Father, the Word, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost, the three in one. The Godhead. So there are three that be regular in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. He now sees his body, or Christ, the believers, every member and all together, collectively and individually, seated together, sitting together in every presence, where in Christ Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now it's clear why it says, in everything give thanks, because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Because, man, you know, he sent you. He's done his glorious <clears throat> work of salvation, and now he takes you out of death into life, out of Adam into Christ, he, he killed you with Christ, he, he buried you with him, and then he, he raises you with him and makes you sit. He makes you ascend and sit together in every presence in Christ. It's a done deal. Yeah. It's a done deal. You don't sit completely because you still are in this body of flesh. Talking about this body, I just went through a tremendous experience. Only 13 days ago. I almost died actually. I was in an operation. At the end of it, I had what they call an ischemic cerebellar attack, a stroke. Maybe a, a mild one, I don't know, but I really thought I was dead. But they didn't have any fear of the death as such. I was just thinking of my dear wife. You know what to call her? I couldn't put two words together. But in the eyes of God, the old man is dead. He's out of the way. You either in Christ Jesus or you're dead in trespasses and sins. He sees the body of Christ seated within together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. There is a finality, there is a purpose, because remember, we're talking about God. God is not the other confusion. He's not confused. He's not messy. He's got a purpose. An eternal purpose. In the ages to come. People have said this God says, I am really this transition. I have me forget it. What is written? In the ages to come. It's gonna be future ages. He, that's God, might show the exceeding riches of His grace. <laughs> exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace I said to faith. You see now that concept is said before by grace you say. And now it's principle by grace. Now, grace carries gift. It's a gift. By grace that you say through faith, that thou not yourself, it's the gift of God. Not the faith, the grace, the salvation. I'm not a Calvinist. I'm a member of the body of Christ. I read and I believe what is written here. My salvation is not on myself. It is the gift of God. That I was dead in trespasses and sins. A child of wrath and disobedience. Dominated. By the course of this world, set by this prince of the power of the air, Satan, I could not possibly come out of Adam. 
Adam was with me in the morning, during the day, during the night, every day. Have this, do this. Fulfill this desire of the flesh. Lasting, lasting, lasting. What, do you, what is it, your point? Money. I want money. Lots of money. And let's say you make a lots of money. And then you die. You leave all behind. Vanity! Everything down here is vanity. You see all these cities that we built? I can be wrong, you know. I live 44 years of my 75. In Rome, the eternal city. <laughs> Nothing is eternal. Here. It's going to be destroyed. It's all vanity. You know what is eternal? The word of God. The love of God. Christ, the Father, the Holy Ghost. Eternal life. This situation is going to change. It's a temporary condition. For by grace are you said through faith and that not yourselves is the gift of God, not the works, lest any man should boast. The Lord knows us so well. He knows what is Adam. Okay, think okay. Well, he is the fruit of my labor, the fruit of my land. I'm gonna offer this to God. He wants the, you know, the lambs like Abel is giving those lambs. But I'm a farmer. I'm a husband then. I have here this jeans. Apples and pears. I'm going to offer this to God. The work of my hands. The sweat of my forehead. I work for this. Is it accepted? No. No, Cain. Hey, boy, has got this name with him. Hey, boy. Looks like it sounded like a sheep. Hey, boy. No, Abel was a sinner just like Cain. But he was a man of faith. Because he said, hey, God wants the blood of lambs, the sacrifice of lambs, innocent. Bigger guys, you know, for Israel. I'm going to do that. That's it. He believed God and, and moved accordingly. God knows that if I can contribute a tiny little bit to my salvation, maybe a prayer, confession of sins, I'm going to boast. Are you saved, Roberto? Oh, yes. <laughs> I accept Jesus into my heart. Really? Wow. I made Jesus Lord of my life. Oh, you got the power to make Jesus Lord of your life. Lordship salvation, heresy, proclaimed by Calvinist preachers. You can make Jesus Lord of your life. He's already Lord, with or without you. Who do you think you are? You think you are the center of the universe? That doesn't exist anyway. All the spotlight on me, me, myself, and I. I pray the sinner's prayer. I accept Jesus into my heart. I met Jesus, Lord of my life. I got baptized in water to follow Jesus in the baptism, water baptism. <laughs> but you know Jesus, man. He was God in the flesh. You aren't. And he was getting baptized in water in the Jordan River to identify himself with this earthly nation Israel, presenting them the Messiah, the King of Israel. The high priest, the prophet, the shepherd of Israel, and first of all, most important, the Messiah, the one who fulfilled all the promises that God made to the fathers of Israel. You can't do any work. And if you think you can, I have 
some news for you. You're wasting your life. And I'm not talking about this life, which anyway you're wasting, but the eternal life. You're missing. Don't even try to think, <coughs> sorry, that you can do works. They're going to please God. <coughs> as long as you're in Adam. You are in Cain, you know. Because you see, in the beginning, God created man and Cain, male and female, created them, no male, female, in other 50 different genders. In his own image and likeness, so man had a body, God has a body, Christ. Spirit, or he goes to God. So, But then, after the fall, Adam had children, sons and daughters, in his own image and likeness, a fallen one. So our works, people might say, oh, brother Roberto, oh, brother John or Philip, or Mary, sister Mary, whatever. Oh, beautiful works. Oh, look, they built such a cathedral to the glory of God. The Freemasons are specialized, you know. Mason means Mason. Misery, they're builders, you know, they build a cathedral. You go all over the world, you see this cathedral, 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 you know, the glory. When I was in Rome, I used to go to St. Peter, oh, it's colossal, it's just too much, it's overwhelming. Don't give me the deal of the glory of God. No! The cross of Christ is where the glory of God is manifested. Christ. We knew no sin. God made him. We knew no sin. To be seen for us. That we sinners. May be made the righteousness of God in him. How the Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day. According to the scriptures. What a mighty God. And you believe in this, me believe in this, simply believing and receiving that this is the gospel of Christ. He saves us and seals us with the Holy Spirit of promise. That's why I say, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves is the gift of God. Not the works, lest any man should boast. My boasting as a man, your boasting would be, as you say in English, Think in the nostrils of the Father. You know, you ask, ask Isaiah, prophet Isaiah, he's a prophet to Israel, but you can learn because whatever is written up for time in the prophet is for learning. Our doctrine is here in the letters of Paul, but no, it's something we study the old Bible from Genesis to Revelation because what is written up for time in the prophet is for learning. Good, praise the Lord. Okay, Isaiah, when he saw the Lord, he cried. I'm finished, I'm dead. Let's go. Let's go to Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah, Jerusalem, in the death of Isaiah, Jotah, Amazar, the Zekai, kings of Judah. And then, let's see where exactly it says this. Yeah, <laughs> as I six in the year the king of Zion, he was a good king according to mankind's standards. In the year the king of Zion died, so the people of Israel really worshipped this king, you know, Uzziah, Uzziah, the great king, you know. But he died because he was a man. I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it to the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twenty he covered his face, with twenty he covered his feet, and with twenty did he, he did fly. And one cried unto the another and said, 
Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Hosts means armies of heaven. The whole earth is full of his glory. Praise God. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the earth was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe with me! That's Isaiah, you know. <laughs> what have I done? Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And we have the audacity to say, Oh, yeah, we know. I went to church, I heard the message. You need to be born again. I said, oh, that's cool. You know, I need to be born again. I lift up my hand. I walk there. I receive Jesus. Oh, isn't that glorious? They lay hands on me. They pray. They made me pray. The sinners pray. Oh, Lord, I'm a sinner. Pray. Oh, Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Blah, 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 blah. And now I'm saved. Shameful. You don't even know who you're talking with, man. Oh, it's me. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> this was the prophet of the Lord. He had the Spirit of God in him. He spoke by the Spirit. Because I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of us. If the Lord didn't intervene, he would be dead. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a lip coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. And he laid upon my mouth and said, Lo, these has touched their lips. Thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. We need, we need, we need to respect the word of God. We need to understand how great is our God. Not the works, lest any man should boast. He knows I will boast. He doesn't want me to boast. But he says, you want to boast? Boast in the Lord. You want a glory? Don't glory in your flesh. Glory in the Lord. Friends, the grace preacher. After 12 years that I am here, with the Apostle Paul reading and studying his letters, I came to this create, put together, I'm starting this new, a new website called The Grace Preacher. Because I want to preach grace. I don't want to preach myself. I want to preach the Lord. And it's grace. And it's salvation. So you can be saved too. Because you might not realize. If you're not saved, you're lost. And if you lost and God forbid you die, you will drop in hell and the lack of fire. Oh, I know, I know that there is universities that deny hell. Okay, let them deny whatever they want. The scripture is very clear. You're either saved or you're lost. If you're saved, you go into heavenly places to be with Christ. Praise the Lord. If you lost, you go to hell and then the lack of fire for eternity. With the devil is in his fallen angels because the, the lake of fire was created for for the devil and his fallen angels, but as enlarged itself because people have decided to, to you know being in the flesh and say, oh, let's go without God with the low case G, the God, this present evil world, Satan, the devil, who really gives you all these wonderful lies. We have a new president who's gonna fix all the problems. We have a new government now. Oh, yes, gold and silver, that's what you need. Yes, yes, well, it's better than having this paper worth nothing, but it's gold and silver worth nothing anyway at the end, you know. Yeah, you have to eat. If you don't work, you don't eat. But while you take care of the physical needs of this earthly life, don't you want to take care of the most important need, your eternal life, your spiritual need, because you now have a spirit in you, you have a soul, you will never die. So eternity will be either in go for be in hell and the lake of fire or in heavenly places with Christ. You have to believe now, you know. 
You can't wait the last moment, the last rats, they call it. <laughs> Very few people have an opportunity to die in, the, in, in a deathbed. You know, look at the statistics. Don't play with eternity, with your eternity. If you want to be selfish at this moment, think, be selfish, think of yourself, where you're going to be eternity, in eternity. With Christ in heavenly places, part of the body of Christ, in a new glorified body, in eternal joy, peace, love, glory, serving this mighty God, or in a torment, everlasting torments of hell and the lake of fire. Please, please, please. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not yourselves is the gift of God. I could go on, but I want to stop here. And I want to say, you want to be saved? I hope you say yes. I can't hear you because I'm not there with you. If you want to be saved, you don't need to do anything. <laughs> you don't need to climb a holy mountain. When you top the road, so, oh, it's, you, you know, the top of the mountain, I'm going to say to you now. You don't need to go on the holy stairs in Rome on your knees praying, Ave Maria, Piena di Grazia. No, you don't need. You don't need to do anything. But one thing is required. Believe. What? How the Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Please, my friend, God loves you. It's evident. I'm a simple ambassador for Christ. Please, my friend. His gospel saves you. Don't go around with John 3.16, you know. John 3.16, there is no cross, there is no blood, there is no resurrection. And the serpent, you could hear this preacher say, oh, you know, they said that John 3 is not the gospel. They said, no, he doesn't save you. That was to Israel. And the serpent on that pole didn't die. But Jesus on that cross, he dies and sheds his precious blood to atone for our sins. It's an introduction to know that Jesus Christ indeed is God. He was God in the flesh for Israel. Yes, yes. But you need to believe how the Christ died for our sins, including yours, according to the scriptures. And he was buried and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. The moment you believe, he saves you and seals you with the Holy Spirit of promise. That we should be to the praise of his glory. Who has trusted in Christ. In whom he also trusted. When? After you heard the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation. The death of Christ. For your sins. Is burial. Is the resurrection. For your justification. In whom also. After you believe. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Which is the earnest. He guaranteed the down payment of our inheritance. Until the redemption of the first possession, unto the praise of its glory. God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, He saves you, He seals you forever, eternally. Praise be to God. It's a free gift. Just believe it, receive it. Because He was delivered, Christ was delivered for our offenses, he was risen again for our justification. Galatians 1 4 it says, how the Christ gave himself for our sins. They might deliver us from this present evil world. And then according to the will of God and our Father. Oh my friend. Oh my friend. Really. You might say. You don't know. I'm a murderer. God knows. I don't need to know. He will save you because. The Apostle Paul. He was a murderer. And God saved him. He's the first of the battle. 
Moses, he was a murderer. And God saved him at that time in that dispensation according to be the deliverer of, of Israel. But why God says? Because God manifests his glory and grace, choosing things which are no worth. Like me and you. Please believe. Be saved. I'm here in this condition, look. But the love of Christ constrains us, because without just, if one die for all, then we're all dead. And they die for all. They, they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which die for them rose again. Wherefore, henceforth we know no man after the flesh. Or we know Christ after the flesh. Now we know him, we know more. Therefore, if any, if any man being Christ is a new creature, allow God to make of you part of the new creature. All things are passed away. The older things have become new. And if I go down here, now then we're ambassadors for Christ. As though God beseech you by us, we pray in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. For he, that's God the Father, has made him, that's Christ, to be seen for us. You understand? Who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteous and God. That's all I want to say. I don't want to bring you to my church and suck tithes and offerings the rest of your life, dump you in some water, and fill your head with fairy tales and giving you the word of God so that you believe in what is written in the word of God, you get saved and sealed. And from that moment on, you can call God Abba Father and worship God in spirit and truth in Christ now and forever because it's going to be forever. Out of Adam into Christ. And you, once you say your life is it with Christ in God, when Christ who is alive shall appear because he will come. He'll appear to take us. Then shall you also appear with him in glory. Please be saved. Believe, receive. Be saved, be sealed. Grace and peace to all. Thank you for listening.